Well, it's back to school for millions of kids in Canada. That means homework, notebooks, textbooks, and carrying all that weight can really add up. So how do you stop backpacks from becoming a huge pain in the back? So for more on that and how to stay healthy in school, we're joined by, as we often are on these issues, by Dr. Jolene Huber. Welcome again. She's a medical doctor and professor of medicine at the University of Toronto. Okay, so let's begin with the backpacks. Uh, staying healthy, uh, and we've all seen these kids carrying these, like they're climbing Everest or something. Uh, how do they do this healthily? Exactly. So some kids are carrying 30 to 40 percent of their weight in their backpacks, and that can contribute to back pain the longer that they're carrying it. Or we also see kids where they're just wearing one uh, strap on their back, and that can contribute to strain in the muscles or contribute to gait issues and as they're walking and posture issues. So what we really want to do when it comes to backpack is make sure that, um, first of all, they're using wider straps and that helps to support the back and a padded back. Um, you also want to uh, make sure that it's a lightweight, so only 10% of the child's body weight should be in this backpack. So make sure that they're not putting too many books, put the books at the center, and then um, finally you want to make sure that um, they're always using both shoulder straps uh, when they're walking and not just slinging over one side. And then finally, if the school allows you, some backpacks like this oh, one can- Oh, very nice. Can, oops, going to, I just can, like my, my airport luggage. They have wheels, so that um, also takes off the weight on the child's back, so that's, those are great tips when you're okay. looking for a backpack. Because this is hard on them and could be hard on them right through life in terms of the damage that can be done. Yeah, right? we, well, we know it doesn't necessarily cause damage, but we know that kids that have back pain in childhood are more likely to have back pain as adults, so those are some ways to kind of avoid early back pain in kids. Okay, so speaking of avoiding things and staying healthy, the common cold, uh, it races through schools, they're, you know, petri dishes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how do you keep your kids healthy? Well, even in 2016, with all our science and technology, we still don't have a cure for the common cold. We all get about three or four per year. Kids are getting about six colds per year. And that's because um, there's about 200 viruses that cause them. Kids are in close proximity and um, viruses can live for 24 hours on surfaces and they're touching each other and sharing things and touching doorknobs. And then when those viruses get on their fingers and we rub our nose or our eyes, that's the, the easiest way that we get colds. So um, apart from telling people not to do that, which is really difficult, we're all rubbing our eyes and and knows all throughout the day, and especially kids, hand washing is, is really the best way to prevent. So um, when you're teaching your child to remind them when they're going back to school how to wash hands, wash hands before they're eating, um, be very thorough. Some people say, sing happy birthday in your head twice while washing hands, so you make sure that you really get a good wash. And send your kids to school. You can attach um, a hand sanitizer to the backpack, give them a little one in their desk, and just ensure that they know about good hand washing and hand hygiene. That was a rule as kids. If we'd been to school or we'd been to the mall, come home, wash your hands and face. Yeah, and the grocery store carts, all of yeah. those. Those are great. Exactly. Great point. Okay, another threat to kids. Some kids in particular, we're talking about allergies and uh, growing awareness and concern about that. And of course, as we know, some of these can prove deadly. Definitely. What advice can you give parents on the allergy front? So there's one in 13 Canadians that have a food allergy and uh, many of those allergies and allergic reactions happen at school and can be quite serious. So um, there's legislation that's in most provinces and territories around making sure that the, the school has a protocol in place if your child has an allergy. So make sure to fill out your forms, make sure you have an epinephrine auto injector or also known as EpiPen just is one of the brands and make sure your child has that up to date um, on them or that the teacher has it, that there's an emergency plan in place. Make sure kids know not to share food. Um, make sure that they are learning to read labels um, and that they know to um, explain when they're having some symptoms or they're feeling unwell, not to be afraid to uh, tell that and that there's an emergency pl um, plan in place. Okay, so we've got their backpacks sorted, we've got uh, hand sanitizers, <laughs> we've got the awareness of, of uh, uh, all kinds of allergies. Uh, rest. Well, you try and set bedtimes for them, and especially with handheld devices, and we used to read under the sheets with the 
flashlights. Yeah. How do you make sure they get to bed and get the sleep they need? Yeah, and this is the hardest transition. I'm having this transition in my home from summer to school and getting kids back onto a regular routine, but that's really important. We know that sleep is obviously important so that kids are alert and awake and can attend and learn. That's the obvious way that sleep helps them learn. But sleep science is also teaching us that we lay down and consolidate memories and, the, and things that we've learned during the day while we're sleeping. So those neural networks are being strengthened. And so sleep, good quality and a good quantity is really important for children's memory and learning. We, we've started to learn more. So you want to start the process early, have the same quiet, relaxing pro, um, bedtime routine every night, keep the same bedtime and the same wake up time all week and through the weekend. And that helps kids to get into a really good cycle. Um, have them read, as you mentioned, instead of taking screens into bed. You don't want them um, being on screens for one to two hours right. before sleeping because that blue light can disrupt their sleep throughout the night. And um, of course, if the texts is, or Instagram and Facebook or, or notifications are going off throughout the night, that's going to keep kids up as well. And so a quiet, um, dark room and have quiet, calming activities without screens in the room is really important for kids learning this year. So much for parents to stay on top of. I guess that's why it's the toughest job in the world. Thank you, <laughs> and Dr. The best Huber. Job in the world. There you go. That's worth every minute of it. Thank you, Dr. Huber. That's Jolene Huber, and she is a medical doctor and professor of medicine at the University of Toronto.